Hello, I am Josh Elliott, and today I will be reviewing Sofia Coppola's newest movie, The Beguiled. I didn't realize until now that I had never actually seen a Sofia Coppola movie before this. I saw A Very Murray Christmas, Bill Murray's Netflix special, which was directed by her. So I've seen that. It's not good. But unlike A Very Merry Christmas, The Beguiled is very good. The Beguiled takes place during the Civil War. Colin Farrell is an injured Yankee. He is rescued by this little girl in the woods and taken to this school in the middle of the woods. It's a school, but like, it's weird. Uh, it's weird. He's the only man there. There are seven women. Two of them are the teachers and they're older. And then four student girls. Colin Farrell's leg is wounded and they let him stay until his leg is healed. But over time, all of them start to really like him and things get suspicious and brooding and odd. I don't even know how to describe this movie. You know, it's gonna go down at some point. You just don't really know how or when or who's gonna be the cause of it. That's really the thing that kept me going. I never knew who was going to be what caused all of the bad stuff to happen. I don't know if it was going to be Colin Farrell trying to stay with these people because he doesn't want to go back to war and trying to manipulate all of them. I didn't know if Kirsten Dunst was going to like go totally crazy because she like loves Colin Farrell's character. And I didn't know if it was going to be Nicole Kidman or Elle Fanning who are like very lustful. This movie is messed up in all the best ways possible. One of the best things about this movie is that it's very like Oscar-y, old fashioned, historical, and very slow as well. It is slow, but it is the perfect length. It is an hour and 40 minutes and it uses its runtime perfectly. The slow parts are used well to establish the characters, establish context for situations. There were very few moments in this movie where I would say I was genuinely bored, like maybe one or two. Very little actually happens in this movie. There's very little dialogue spoken. This succeeds with flying colors at the show don't tell rule. And for those of you who aren't familiar with filmmaking, one of the common rules in filmmaking is show don't tell. Since filmmakers have the ability to do things visually, they should do things visually to communicate things to the audience instead of having the characters just tell the audience things, the, let the audience figure it out for themselves. And this movie does that a lot. It does it really well. It's the Civil War. It's that time period. And this movie is all about lust. It's not something that you talk about. The movie has to find ways for characters to talk about it and address it without actually discussing it. And it's very interesting how Sofia Coppola manages to shoot this movie in a simple way. Most of the shots are static. Get across all of these characters' motivations and suspicions about each other. And it's very interesting. All of the actors are amazing as well, but that, not just the leads. Like, Nicole Kidman, she can basically do no wrong in terms of performances. But then again, I've only seen her in this Lion and Moulin Rouge, so I don't really know what her other performances are like. Kirsten Dunst, amazing, very subtle in her performance. Colin Farrell, awesome guy. I love how his character changes throughout the story in ways that you can see him manipulating the other characters. All of the younger girl actresses are also really good. Elle Fanning is honestly one of the weaker ones. Not that her performance is bad, but her character is so archetypical that she is the embodiment of immature teenage sexuality. Every time you see her, she either looks like she wants to have sex with Colin Farrell, or she is just really bored and pissed off about whatever she's doing. And I hated her character, but I think that's kind of the point. So I can't exactly fault anyone for like how I felt about her character. She just never stood out much to me. Angry Rice from The Nice Guys is in this movie. I didn't know that until I went and saw it, and she did really good as well. Her character is definitely one of the less important ones of the girls, but I liked her a lot. The best of the young actresses. I don't know the actress's name, actually. The little girl whose name I can't even remember. She's the one who finds Colin Farrell. She's the youngest girl, I'm pretty sure, but she kind of works as a sidekick to Nicole Kidman, and she's always, like, doing work for her. And I loved the dynamic between her and all of the characters. She has a very, I don't know who the actress is, but she has a very mature presence on screen. 
And so I admired that about her and I admired that about her character. So yeah, the movie is slow at times, which is why it's not getting a higher score from me. It is also very uneventful. Now, that is a good thing and a bad thing. It does make the slow moments feel even more slow. There were a few times when it felt like not much is happening, but then by the end, it's also so admirable that you can have a movie that is 80% interesting. There are pretty much two, maybe three things that happen. Genuine events. Like, okay, that was a thing that happened. The rest of it is just kind of subtle hints toward what the next thing is going to be, what the characters are going to do to get to that thing. It's a great study in character. It's a great study in filmmaking. Cinematography, costume design, production design. Those are three awards that The Beguiled has a genuine chance at at the Oscars, because the three of those things amazing. Cinematography, I'm awful with camera terms, which is why I don't want to be a cinematographer when I grow up. It's shot in this very old-fashioned way. It genuinely looks like it's the Civil War. It looks like it's an older movie. The setting and the way everything is designed, it just has a very white, pure tone to it. Inside at least, and then outside everything just looks very gray and dark and unsettling. I really liked it. Costumes, of course, amazing because it's a Civil War movie, but I, I loved the uses of color. Everything starts off as just white and which represents purity. It represents this pure place that Colin Farrell is basically interrupting and making everyone like sex crazy. There's this scene where they all eat dinner with Colin Farrell for the very first time. All of the girls are suddenly just become very colorful. Like everyone starts wearing colors. Not only did the colors reflect things about their personalities, but it also showed how the characters were changing. They were all moving away from their bland, pure, white clothes. If you are a typical like movie snob like me, like you like the Oscar-ish movies or more indie type movies, go see this movie. It is amazing. It is really unsettling, brooding, and odd. It's a lot of fun to watch, which is weird because I wouldn't normally call like a slow movie fun, but it's fun trying to dissect everything that's happening. At least I found it fun. If you're the type of person that likes big budget blockbuster movies, I wouldn't exactly recommend going and seeing this movie. It's probably not the type of movie for you. It's still good. There is stuff to be enjoyed about it but it's an acquired taste and the people that have that acquired taste like me will really get a kick out of it. So I'm going to give The Beguiled an 8 out of 10. It is really good. It has some Oscar chances, I'm not going to lie, like in the three that I listed and maybe some acting awards as well. I don't know. Nicole Kidman probably has a chance, maybe Colin Farrell as well. This is a really good movie. You should go and see it. What did you think of The Beguiled? Please let me know. If you've seen it, you probably haven't because not many people have, I'm assuming. Please tell me what you think of the review. Thanks for watching.